Yo, what is going on, YouTube Biscuit Short of Tea Time Turtwig? Today we're playing some games with Malamar VMAX, Tag Call, Mewtwo, Box, Weavile GX deck. And this is Sanders' build of this deck. There's been a couple other builds that have been floating around. I actually beat one in top eight of a tournament with Dark Box earlier this week. Earlier this week? What is today? Last week. Um, but this is Sanders' build of this deck that Sander actually took to the Limitless Invitational, one of the bigger tournaments. Uh, this time I went 5-2. I believe got uh, ninth or 10th place. Did not quite make top 8, unfortunately. But um, I always love playing around with any of the decks that Sander comes up with. So um, so you guys can follow them and uh, play with any of the creations that they come up with. I'm going to leave their Twitch and their Twitter in the description below. So go check them out over there. Um, because Sander's always coming up with a bunch of crazy cool decks um, that are also really good. Plays at a very high level. And uh, the decks that Sander comes up with not only look cool but also function to also win games so that's the best part about sanders decks uh this is another one of their concoctions like i said um it's a malamar v max deck so that's our main attacker in here it's got the max jammer for the 180 uh, your opponent reveals their hand choose a card you find there and put it on the bottom of the deck so we try and you know just slow, slow down our opponent or sometimes completely lock them out of the game with that max jammer um and to support the malamar v max to get it there to that attack on ideally turn two uh we got the Moltres v of course and we've got the Weavile GX alongside a little bit of a tank call package here because we have a couple red and blues in here to help us accelerate energy potentially uh, into play through the red and blue to get the Weavile out. And then we got like uh, one Caitlyn and Cynthia as well as here to go with the tag calls. But we've got a couple other Pokemon we can search out with the tag calls as well. We got a Mewtwo, a uh, Tyranitar, Mega Sableye, Tyranitar GX, and then also that Umbreon and Darkrai GX. So we have the Mewtwo in here for that Psychic typing for the Urshifu matchup, so we can take big knockouts on Urshifus really quickly. Uh, Malamar isn't weak to fighting, but we'd rather just get one hit KOs in those scenarios. Uh, then we have the ridiculously powerful GX attack of the Darkrai and Umbreon with the Dark Moon GX. Such a powerful, if not the most powerful GX attack in the game uh, is that Dark Moon GX, but it's really hard to pull off. It takes six energy. That's why stuff like the Moltres, the Red and Blue, all that makes a big difference to getting there. Uh, and then there's this Mega Sableye and Tyranitar in here for the Greedy Crush. It helps us hit numbers sometimes on stuff like uh, other Vs, like any V with a 210 can knock that out with Greedy Crush or uh, stuff like Bolton, just stuff like that we can take knockouts out or a really nice way to utilize this attack to close out games is knocking out to Denny for three prize cards. So if we two a KO, a tag team or a V Max, we can clean up a Dedenne with Greedy Crush to kind of close out the game. Another really cool play that you can do is like if you're up against ADPization, you can Dark Moon GX the ADP and then Greedy Crush the uh, Dedenne on the bench. You can do it all through Mewtwo, the same Pokemon uh, if you have the Mewtwo set up over setting up both of these individually, which is also super sick. Uh, Krikatoon and Double Dedenne in here for some draw support. A Marshadow to help control those paths to the peak. And a Mew in here to help stop stuff like Urshifu getting too much value out of their snipe damage. Moving along, of course, it is a Sander build, so stuff's going to be a little bit wacky. Three Judges Whistles. <laughs> so effectively, we're playing a 57-card deck because of that. There's three Judge Whistles or Judges Whistles. Judge Whistles in the deck. Uh, draw a card. We don't play any Judge, so we're not going to be putting a Judge from our discard pile into our hand. But we will be drawing a card with the judge whistle and then the rest of that pretty straightforward for or like any typical deck we got some draw supporters out here marnie's in research there is two cheryl in this build so there is that really nice uh combo there of they hit our, our v max we move the energy off with weavile we cheryl to heal it and then we move the energy back on and then go back into max jammer or whatever else we want to attack with on the turn so there's a couple cheryls in here to help with that uh reset stamp for the late game uh some dark energy of course a capture and three air balloons for switching cards and uh that's the list like i said once again, a shout out to Sander for the build. Go check them out. Links in the description. Let's get to some games. All right, here we go. We won the coin flip. So yeah, we would like to go first. It just works out really well to go first. Opening hand, pretty good. We got the. I'm excited to use the judge whistles. So uh, probably just gonna start the turn with a judge whistle. See what we get. We don't have to be too aggressive here if we don't want to. But let's start with that judge whistle. Just draw a card. See if it's good. Oh my gosh, it's actually almost like a perfect card there. So currently. I think we're up against i guess i don't know for sure what we're up against but i'm gonna go with this tank call here uh it's gonna grab red and blue and um something i was gonna try and get into the malamar i feel like we're up against adp probably here um yeah i think i want to get into the malamar on the next turn so i think i'm gonna grab this I could go for the we're a little bit of, if i want to go for the dark moon i'd have to dead a change here which i really don't want to do so i think i'm just gonna go like this this catch this retreat and pass and the next turn we can red and blue uh get out the weavile and then dead a change try and find the malamar v max or maybe even top deck it if we get lucky 
and then kind of go from there and that's going to be the game plan escape rope to force my seal into the active that is rather rude from my opponent a little bit unnecessary i think um but it's not too big of a deal it looks like they've got a pretty slow start as it's just a crowbat for two so looking good for us hopefully that's a dedene so yeah it looks like it is adp i mean if i had to guess nation crowbat cherish ball escape rope is it adp station is it the Moltres build i guess we'll figure that out eventually um and De dark moon is definitely something that wants to be on our list or whatever of a uh, high priority that we want to be considered to be you consider using as soon as possible um so we'll have to see i also don't have to dead a change like we can get out weavile v max and moltrace that's like it's all possible just get all those out but i think this is a little bit easier to uh get going but we'll see there's a quick ball i'm trying to figure out if i could utilize that at all right now i mean i can quick ball away a marnie grab a card red and blue that card away instead i guess but what would i probably mew is not gonna be very good in this matchup i could grab one of these to combo with mewtwo later on i don't hate that so we could grab like probably the dark rye umbra or this i mean i don't know <laughs> they're all like okay i wish i could get cricketoon out here but i don't think i can i could get the mole trace that would be something just good to have in play i guess for sure no i have to discard this card that's right let's just discard the mew um get out the deck a little bit get the weavile online and then we're gonna dead a change and then we're gonna try and find something yeah leaving all the attackers in the deck seems correct here because then if i dead a change because like i might not be able to get the malamar v max i would love to love to get the malamar v max wing in and we did so that's great um gonna go ahead and calm away the sneasel okay this is pretty good so we can calm away sneasel get our malamar v max Throw that down. Quick ball away the Umber and Dark, Dark Ride. Grab Cricketune. We can draw some more cards this turn. Tune. Air Balloon. Cricketune. Maltrace. Tune for three. Dark Energy would be nice. Judge Whistle. Dark Energy would be nice. Uh, red and blue's not bad. And here we go. Turn two. Malamar. This is what we're looking to pull off. We've got it cooking. Uh, our board state is nice. It's 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 nice <laughs> it's just good we got a, a bunch of nice stuff set up here oops done max jammer how good of a lock can we get or any kind of lock how disruptive can we be uh they've got decent stuff here all right so we can't really stop them from doing anything but how do we reduce the chance of them getting the most value out of their turn they have this metal saucer i don't want them to use this metal saucer i don't really want them to play this pokemon catcher either but i would rather have them force play it now instead of being able to utilize it later i think so i don't want to put that back in their deck i don't want them to do, i i'm fine with them attaching they could whiff the energy if i take away the energy what gives them the most value definitely want to leave that in the hand want to leave that in the hand they're set up to gx attack next turn. there's nothing we can do about the gx attack but i could take away i'm trying to think about if there's anything worth like what would i even take away here maybe the metal maybe they whiff it an attachment for a turn if i take this away yeah, let's take away the metal energy they might whiff an attachment for turn which could be a big deal later down the down the road so that seems like the best thing to do our hand is a little bit clunky right now uh on our next turn so we, we need like a top deck ourselves i'm kind of fine with them using this um because yeah if, they, if i leave it for them like if they get a heads here i should be able to hopefully next turn just get back into the malamar and max jammer again but later on in the game when they're trying to go like gust gust on my cricketune and my Tadene. oh also that means if they top deck quick ball they can't metal saucer so yeah i think it was correct to get rid of the energy there because they did top deck quick ball but yeah they can't metal saucer and here comes a mawile but that is more than fine with me i'm glad to have the mawile here this is a gx now in play that we can take three prize cards off of with that uh tyranitar so that's good for us they grabbed a Dene, so i guess they're not using the research here uh, and instead going to dead a change which fine with me another gx on the bench closer to being bench locked they didn't really need to dead a change they could have just researched and that would have been more than fine <laughs> they don't need to dead a change there uh swell no problem and yeah bench lock happening so you love to see that always good for us and they only have a four card hand here so three card hand here let me correct myself that they only have a three card hand here and they didn't attach to the active so it's very possible we could lock them out with the max jammer here well here comes a peony so we'll know exactly what they grab here as well so this is actually huge for us we'll know exactly what they have in hand and we'll have access to max jammer so uh metal saucer research but we can just max jam the research out of their hand put it on the bottom of their deck and then they are living on the top deck they're gonna hold the metal energy though which is smart that's a smart oh no, it's a metal saucer right so it's not that big of a deal um max jammer 
go ahead and grab myself that research metal saucer that's it let's see what they top deck hopefully not a research that would be unfortunate um or an energy even just an energy would be pretty good yeah they got the energy i mean they pretty good odds of hitting something here uh we just don't want them to hit the energy they did hit the energy uh now our best top deck is cheryl and our hand is unfortunately dead our hand unfortunately is locked up it's been locked up for a turn or two now so we're really hoping that we can pull off i mean cheryl top deck would actually be absurdly good um absurdly absurdly good um i mean yeah our hand is locked uh top deck dark energy i mean it's not bad but it's not really what i was looking for um we're gonna draw three prize cards here but then how do we draw the rest of our prize cards from there i don't think we have a great way to draw the rest of our prize cards i could drag off for a turn but that doesn't seem very good so i think i just have to throw the energy in the into play here then max jammer but this feels so awkward and like it doesn't do a whole ton i could bench this to try and get off another malmar v max next turn to combo with stamp i guess um and then we could hopefully lock them out of the game from there with the max jammer at this point i feel like this is what we're going for i don't really have a choice Air Balloon is nice to send up the Cricketoon to draw an extra card. Marnie is nice for the disruption. Well, Marnie's not that great here because we do want a reset stamp. Yeah, I don't love Marnie here. Let's see what their top deck is. They can't win this turn, so that's a little bit comforting, I guess. Um, so we can stamp them to two and uh, hit the Zation, but we also need something big enough in the active. Well, actually, in this situation, well, we can't really KO the Zation, unfortunately. We can't KO the Zation at all. But stamp to two is pretty good. Stamp to two, hit, go from there. Uh... I think what attacks we have access to that'd be like really really good here we don't really have anything though greedy crush only unfortunately only works on gx's but we're not even close to so enough energy quick ball is pretty nice so i'm just gonna go ahead and oh i didn't send up the cricket i like default send up the thing with free retreat um oops my bad hopefully i don't get too punished for that um i think we have to grab the dene here now though the dene and we won't have bench space for anything else to be honest i could go ahead and grab I'll stamp them low. We do need to just get this thing set up. Yeah, I should have sent up the Cricketune there. Oops. And out a card out of the deck. Probably just a Sneasel then. We're just not going to be able to utilize it. And then we're in a dead change. We need an energy. We need a VMAX. Both things are in there, but I don't think I feel like we don't have great odds of hitting. We'll find out. We'll find out. Here we go. Dead change. We got the research, so that's going to help us see a lot of cards. There's the Cheryl, and the Cheryl seems pretty good to try and hold on to. But I don't think I can risk whiffing here. Um, so I think I should go with the research here. And I would love to Caitlyn and Cynthia and hold the Cheryl. But I don't think I can risk whiffing the VMAX here. And we got it. Whew. Barely. Judge Whistle? I don't even know if this is the correct time to use the Judge Whistle. I'm away. It shouldn't matter because we're kind of bench locked from here on out. Uh, if our opponent takes a knockout and frees up a bench base, we lose the game. So... <laughs> I don't really want to bump their stadium because um I just I don't want this in my hand if they play a Marnie or, or a researcher or a Marnie or a stamp or something so all right shadow connection move them up to the Malamar and here we go Max Jammer they have two cards in hand so it's very unlikely they'll be able to win the game next turn especially with us taking a card out of their hand but what do they have is the question switch and metal energy I think I want to take the switch here and I'll leave them with that metal energy. I think I want to take the switch here. Uh, because then they could hit us, which means they're only a gust effect away from winning the game. So definitely think I want to take that. Also, that means if they top deck boss. I mean, I guess if they top deck boss, they can hard retreat and then widely bite anyways. Oh, and then the quick ball top deck. So here comes Goss. Or no boss. Any grape catcher wouldn't work because they wouldn't have enough cards in hand for research. Okay, so this is okay i guess i still don't love this i really would have hoped that our lock would have stuck a turn didn't so here we are i guess my opponent has a fresh seven card hand unfortunate top deck there for us i'm sure my opponent's loving it um <clears throat> but we have the cheryl so even if they hit us this turn we can move the energy off we don't have the energy though we actually can't attack next turn unless you know we have moltres so we'll get the energy that way we'll knock out the mall while once again take a card out of their hand but this is not looking good they got I mean, the station just set up. <laughs> so if they have a gust effect, they do just win. So if they have multiple gust effects in the hand, we can't get rid of both of them or all of them. So let's see here, though. Uh, we're going to Shadow Connection off the Malamar. Ultra one up. Play the Cheryl, heal the damage. 
going in with the max jammer again and whew, it's not looking good it's not looking good we'll see though we'll see maybe maybe they don't have that great of a hand maybe they only have like a one card that really does it for them and then we can take that away and then here we go and then we're just down to one prize card left so we're like a knockout away we knock out anything on the board there it is the, the double boss that's what i was scared of i was like well they didn't have any in their last hand um i mean they had the elder gospel stuff they probably still have a ton of boss left that's what adp plays a lot of boss and yet yeah, two boss in the hand means we can't lock them out of the game and they will get the dub so we'll take the l here in this one but it was a close one max jammered a lot we would have loved to got to that dark moon that is really the big big attack we want to use in this matchup against ad position is that dark moon gx but unable to do it we fall a little bit short and um take the l in this first one but it was a fun game still got to utilize the cheryl too which was sick Let's see what we can do in the next all right here we go again we did win the coin flip i'll go first again it felt pretty good last game that turned two red and blue was actually pretty sick um not as good of a hand this time around but actually it's i mean it's still pretty good though right i can't complain about a hand like this not bad okay we'll open the marsh shadow just so my lone sneasel does not get donked we'll see what we're up against <clears throat> cali rex okay we did top like a quick ball i'm gonna start with that judge whistle almar v max okay so we have a hand here but <clears throat> is it enough we have this we have this so i want to attach to the v all right so let's go with tag call here because we need quick ball fodder and that's going to be mewtwo in this in this matchup and both these are pretty good i only need to grab the mewtwo maybe i could grab the red and blue just in case i top deck I don't think I ever no I could top deck like the Dene or something like that and then that would work out pretty well actually to be honest then we can quick ball with the Mewtwo um grab that Malamar V and we need to set up a multis with the dark and the discard pile but yeah it's definitely possible catch and pass and I need an air balloon to move the marsh shadow to attack next turn but we don't again in this kind of matchup we actually don't need to attack next turn um which that's ideally what we want to do so yeah we could use red and blue here if we top deck like Dedene, we can red and blue away the research and the Weavile because the second Weavile was in the deck. Get out the other Weavile, evolve Dede change. And then all we need is like an energy or an air balloon or so many things to just be able to attack next turn. So if we top deck Dedene, pretty good. We could have also like played it maybe to go around with a tag team Pokemon, save the quick ball for Dedene as well, and then red and blue this turn. <clears throat> could have done something like that actually and plan to attack with Dark Ray Umbreon instead. And then we would have been able to red and blue actually, and then Dede change with the quick ball or even Cricketune. We could have gone with Cricketune as well. And that would have worked out fine as well. So maybe I was a little bit, I don't know, tunnel vision on the Malamar VMAX here because I had it in hand, but I could have tank called, <clears throat> excuse me, got, you know, just something else. Could have got a uh, plan to attack with Dark Ramber, like I said, because we can KO all these things with Dark Ramber and even build them into like the, the GX attack for the following turn potentially after this turn or after our next turn, go into the GX attack on the next turn. Um, yeah, maybe I tunnel vision a little bit on the Malamar VMAX here because we definitely could have gone with just like, setting up the, the dark Umbreon and uh knock out the calyrex v like this thing would have been great to knock out here comes a shadow mist so really slow start for my opponent um there's that quick ball but i don't have the cards to support using dead a change unless i want to quick ball away with my v max but i really don't so but this is still a good quick ball because it can get us the moltres to hopefully get us the energy in play to actually take the knockout this turn still so we get the moltres we get the weavile we get the malamar we get the research pretty good uh turn so far but let's see what this quick ball with what this gives us and that is almost great we can't put the viridian force in play because our opponent used <laughs> shadow mist so we're a little bit short here of a ridiculously good turn but still pretty good and i guess i'll just have to go and pass to my opponent now yeah <clears throat> if only we could have viridian force away the energy gotten an energy use the dire flame wings air balloon to the air. Yeah, almost a ridiculously good turn instead we have to settle for eh, it's pretty good could have been better <laughs> could have been better but still not bad still not i can't complain about a turn like this for sure um much better than you know a lot of turns out there so still solid we're set up nice for the turn after to be able to start attacking um and as long as we can start to streamline energy into play we can get to that dark moon gx which we might need as an answer to this alchemy but we could also boss hit alchemy next turn that could also just be our plan is just boss punch alchemy because get through this thing is is kind of our priority this thing's weak to dark we can knock out this thing any day any turn whenever 
no problem to KO the Calyrex VMAX. That's that's an easy knockout. Now, the Alchemy VMAX is a little bit tougher and a little bit more dangerous with that G-Max Whisk. 60 for each energy they discard. So they can one-hit KO any of our stuff. They need the energy in play, um, but it's still a little bit scary. But if they only have this one Alchemy VMAX at the end of their next turn, I think I'll just knock out the active here. Take the prize cards because this thing will not be in a position to want to chaos on the following turn, which will leave us in a, a pretty good spot pretty much no matter what. So I think that will be the game plan here. It's just go ahead and knock out the active. But here comes the daddy change. So a lot more to work with potentially from my opponent. We'll see what they draw off the daddy change and how many how many Calyrex they set up is going to be the biggest thing because they set up a ton of Calyrex. I could also look for like a boss boss play where I like boss or I KO this one or not boss boss. I KO this one and then I boss KO the next one. But we don't have enough energy in play to support that right now. Um, so we have to like top deck and energy. If we do top deck and energy, then we would have enough energy to be able to go like knock out boss, knock out another VMAX. So they have to get the energy in place somehow for this thing to take a knockout. Theoretically, if we're playing around getting knocked out. But if they don't, then we're just kind of, we're okay, you know. So let's see what they pull off here and see what we have to, what we think we have to play around. Um, and we'll decide what, uh, excuse me then we'll decide what we end up attacking it's like we can chase this and punch this or we can just kind of take the knockout on the active and go from there so they're definitely gonna set up another calyrex v max here or calyrex v another v is gonna come into play here for sure off this quick ball i would imagine i can't imagine anything else that they want from this quick ball here so i'm assuming calyrex v is coming into play yeah there it is uh, how many are they gonna get down that's kind of the question how many calyrex v are they gonna get into play um right here right now how many are they gonna get into play so that way we can we know exactly how many energy our opponent can get into play with calyrex vmax on the next turn to be able to use with alchemy so they can get two energy in play next turn so i think knocking out the active here is just going to be the move uh get rid of this keep the weavile around i think that's probably a little bit better value overall in the future I'm retreat and i think i will just resetting hold because i don't want my opponent to have access to reinforced uh, and then, like I said, let's just take the knockout on the active here because we know they max out at four energy next turn because they can get one V max plus attachment for turn. So that's only 240 damage. So um, pretty good. And we can get rid of their only draw support here, which is the Calyrex V max in the hand. And they got the Psychic, Aurora, and a Mars Shadow. So we might have them locked up here. We'll see. We'll see what their top deck is. Uh, so far, <laughs> the top deck have been pretty good for my opponents when I hit them with the Max Jammer. But you know, maybe this game stuff changes. Um, and yeah, we know we just can't get KO, which is huge. Uh, they could go with an adornment but then we're just hitting this and then well in the current hand we don't have enough energy to do a follow-up attack honestly so we'll have to dead change here to try and find more yeah there's the adornment so we have to find energy that's basically all we need here we need to hit this energy in play hit it again win the game so maybe i should have left the reinforce in play for that reason to be honest but there's a top deck so i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that energy because then we can multi it back and then hopefully draw into another energy which we can attach for turn and we did so uh attach over two <clears throat> and actually we're really close to winning the game here but we can't retreat and attack oh no, no no this thing is not weak to dark we also have a dark attacker interactive don't listen to me throw that there uh capture out cricket tune would be nice to be honest C capturing out cricket tune would be nice i'm gonna go ahead and do that just in case my opponent does play reset stamp a bit of extra draw power if we would need it although in this scenario looking so good for us i don't think we'd ever need it but better safe than sorry i guess um, although, I, yeah, now that I'm kind of rethinking it, I don't think we'll ever need the Cricket Tune. Um, yeah, we should just be good here, right? They want to take a knockout, they can, but then we just go set up Moltres, Dire Flame Wings, Aurora Burn Knockout. And if they retreat and run, we have the boss in hand, but for them to retreat and run would mean all their energy goes away. I feel like they have to. Yeah, there's the concede, and we get another dub. I guess we didn't win the first one. We get our first dub with the Malamar VMAX. All right, here we go. Would you like to go first? The answer is, I mean, yeah, sure. Why not? Three firsts in a row. Got the matching Bidu sleeves. You know they are uh, <clears throat> cultured. Uh, it looks like we have the data change. We're really hoping we top deck a Pokemon or a tag call here to be able to utilize this calm. But yeah, it looks like we have the data change here to try and get something going to get set up on the following turn. We really need to find a Sneasel. Um, so if we do top deck like a Pokemon, we could just go like Quick Ball get Sneasel pass to be honest we don't have to get too aggressive uh, but yeah it looks like it's gonna have to be a daddy change here and we're up against a blissey deck blissey sincino i have not really seen the sincino build very much so i'm curious to see <clears throat> how it goes and losing a cheryl for this matchup actually is probably not great we would love to use cheryl in this matchup so let's use this Draw. judge whistle judge whistle into malamar v max hey that's not bad <laughs> not bad at all um 
ahead and get rid of this Malamar. We'll quick ball away the dark energy uh, and grab ourselves the Moltres. So we do need Moltres to get uh, the energy. We need the energy to get Excelled into play so that we can actually attack with the Malamar VMAX on the following turn. Because uh, the current hand does not support red and blue very well. So, and unfortunately, we have to pass and let this thing take a hit. It'll only be 40 damage, but 40 damage is more than zero. So we don't love it. But we're gonna have to go ahead and deal with it and uh pretty good start though pretty good start a lot of energy in the discard pile already got the maltrace out which can sometimes be not too hard to do but like it really stinks when we don't get the maltrace out early and start building up that energy in play because it leads so well into like all of our other like options for game plans like the dark moon all that kind of stuff is just so good to do but to get the energy in play can be the struggle and maltrace really is one of the most consistent aggressive efficient ways to get energy in play and keep energy in play because even when star stuff starts getting knocked out we had no energy in the discard pile before dire flame wings coming back around and get it back here comes a boss on my sneasel which is just kind of rude to be honest they don't get the knockout i wonder if they thought they had the ko there they are 10 short uh they can get that turn 160 with the powerful energy or it's also possible that their hand is dead and because of that possibility now with this research top deck we're actually not going to marnie here we're going to research uh, and not shuffle my opponent's hand perfect we got the air balloon we got the weavile does it get better than that i don't know our second weavile might be in that deck. i'm gonna check real fast because i might bench a sneasel so i can use red and blue next turn and the answer is yes it is so i'm gonna go ahead and grab the caitlin and cynthia and the dark rye and umbreon and then i'm gonna go ahead and bench the sneasel because we can red and blue next turn to get a bunch of energy in play to set up for dark moon on the following turn especially when our opponent's kind of doing nothing right now May, stay, may as well take advantage of that scenario um, is what I'm thinking here. So max jammer, 180. And then let's have a peek. Powerful capture, boss. How annoying is boss right now? Not that annoying. So to be honest, well, they could KO my Sneasel. Let's get rid of that boss. They could KO the Sneasel. Though. They could go attach KO Sneasel. I don't like that though. I don't like that. It's not super annoying, but I don't love it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the boss on the bottom. I, don't, I would rather have them hit my active here, I think. So we're gonna go ahead and take away that option from my opponent uh here comes another energy to capture i'm sure they're gonna grab a i guess they could grab a blissey here we'll see what they do grab um another blissey okay sure why not so we know they've got more attackers to work with here comes that hit 90 damage gonna get the ko here and like i said red and blue really good here to just get more energy in play uh and get this getting the second weave on play is also really nice to be honest because get rid of those two i think um it's i mean if they ever now if they can't really ko a weavile like they could go ko a weavile but then it's like well we kind of have a second weavile i don't know if like that was worth and it usually probably won't be uh but max jammer knockout and then we got that set up for the dark moon on the next turn i'm not gonna bench it yet uh, i guess we get rid of the powerful energy here they can keep the basic psychic because the basic psychic is not as good as the powerful energy <laughs> so we're hand locking them kind of because they don't really have anything to work with anyway so i don't know if i'd really call this hand locking our opponent they just kind of don't have anything and we are constantly just taking the best card out of their hand still and putting it on the bottom of their deck. But um, I guess the boss could have been annoying. Psychic energy is worse than powerful energy. Here comes a level ball. So Sincino's online, but they've made the mistake of attaching and now they can no longer make do. So they should have held this psychic energy, made do it. Um, and then hopefully try to draw into like a Marnie or a research or whatever supporters they actually play. I'm not even sure, but we can lock up the game guaranteed. Uh, not hundred percent guaranteed. Actually, they could still like make do into a basic and bench the basic. But uh, we'll put we'll put ourselves in a pretty good spot here with this. Do I even want to do this? It feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna grab these two. I'll Caitlyn and Cynthia away the uh, Tyranitar, and I'm gonna get back that Cheryl uh, for later. And then we still have access to the Titar through the Mewtwo, so we didn't lose access to it. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's go with the Dark Moon. Let's get off a of Dark Moon in this uh gameplay video here um it's not gonna it's not gonna look as powerful as it should with this one this play here because i mean we're just not uh our opponent's really not doing anything so okay and then yeah dark moon well yeah dark moon gx yeah so it looks a lot cooler when our opponent has like they've been doing stuff they have a hand they're like dark moon now you can't do anything on your turn even all the stuff you have my opponent doesn't have anything and now they also just can't do anything so not as cool of a dark moon as it usually is but still a dark moon gx nonetheless and yeah our opponent has can't play any trainer cards uh, they can still make do like i said they can make do and they can draw into a pokemon and put down they can still play pokemon they can still play energy cards so here comes the make do 
out of level ball they couldn't play so if they get a blissey or a sincino or something they can still play the game they're still they're not done yet but if this is it this is all they got is this sincino we knock it out next turn and the game is over and there we go black lance once again or our first black lance this game actually knockout we get the dub over the blissey sincino deck of our opponent and that's going to do it for these uh these games I hope you guys enjoyed the video once again shout out to sander for the build always love playing with the decks that sander comes up with uh always so creative cool different interesting um and make sure you check them out links in the description see you guys tomorrow